This is Susanna Voskanyan and today we have special guests from Prime, Dr. David Chapu, David Chapu and Rosalind Simpson. And uh, my name is Dr. Rosalind Simpson and I am a general practitioner in the south of England. Uh, but I also work with the other half of my week for Prime Partnerships and International Medical Education, teaching, um, well, teaching a variety of things, but teaching medical subjects with a whole person perspective and uh, also the Christian and value-based medicine. Royal London Hospital. Uh, that was 13 years ago. Since then I worked with Prime Partnerships in International Medical Education and I used to be their Director of Medical Education. I think I've retired from that now as well. I'm very happy to have them in our program and today's topic will be about what is whole person medicine, what is whole person care, uh, how many years, you know, during a uh, phase time, every time spiritual aspects have been excluded from medicine and we saw only just uh, physical body, we treated only physical body and we didn't pay attention to people psychological uh, problems and we w we had been thinking that our uh, treatment for physical body would be enough so today topic today's topic is very interesting and you will hear about whole person medicine from the specialist who had been running this project programs and had been teaching these topics in Armenia and in different countries I think this is about whole person medicine and that God made us whole people. He made us with body, mind and with spirit. And all the scripture says we're made in God's image. And that suggests that all of us are made in God's image, the whole part of us. So both body, mind and spirit, we all belong to God. And uh, the values, the, the way in which we work with people should respect the image of God in body and mind and in spirit. What is Prime? Can you tell me what Prime does usually? What is Prime's, uh, I can say, uh, purpose of teaching and what is Prime's teaching different from others' teachings? So maybe you'd like to know a little bit about what Prime is and how it started. So it started about ooh, 15 years ago, something like that, as Doctor's Dilemmas. And this was a way of enabling Christian doctors to deal with uh, ethical dilemmas in their practice. Now I think it was some doctors from Romania who joined us early on and they liked it so much they said well we can't all come up to you why don't you come to us and so we started uh, teaching in Romania but things developed from doctors dilemmas and specifically for Christian doctors to, um, to much broader medical education, but always based upon what's important, based upon values, and essentially what is based on Christian values. So Prime has always worked with Christian partners abroad, and I've forgotten how many countries we're working in now, is it 23, is it 50? It's, we have contact in a lot of countries. And it's a partnership organization. That's to say, we don't tell anyone what to do, we don't con attempt to control anyone or anything like that. We work in partnership with our Christian hosts in various countries to enable them to develop the sort of training service that they want to develop. So we're an educational organization. Uh, we're not a, a service organization, so we don't provide medical clinics or surgeries or anything like that. But we're basically an educational uh, institution. 
and our move is to enable our heart's desire is to enable uh, Christian values and the kingdom of God to come into the kingdom of medicine or I should put it the other way around the kingdom of medicine to come into the kingdom of God I think that's probably the right way around so it's values based it's enabling it's supporting it's working in partnership and so although we may teach um, sort of bread and butter medicine like hypertension and diabetes it's always in a whole person context and we may say a bit more about that in a minute how Christian doctors can make changes in medicine and how whole person care medicine can be like can make changes uh, in this uh, field because uh, most of the doctors they now they come to know that they are there, there are some other aspects that we have to pay attention to pay attention more and by that we can help our patients more I think I'd just like to um, uh, talk about the the difference between today's medicine and whole person medicine because things have come a long way away from physical body and healing of the mind and healing of the spirit to have been done by the same person and many years ago it was done where the there were few treatments, there were doctors, but a lot of the, the people who were sick would go to church to have some help and they would see that the, church, the illness was caused by a spiritual problem. And uh, prayer and pilgrimages and this sort of thing was thought to be really important. But things have changed now and in our societies uh, other more evidence-based aspects have come to the fore. People have looked a lot into science and they've looked at the body right down to the tiniest cell and the, the atom and the molecules and high enzymes that actually make the body work. I don't think they understand quite how the body works from the point of view of the creation of it, but they understand a lot about it and therefore medicines are, are, are working, I believe, with God as the creator to heal the person. Uh, the problem is that if you have no faith of any sort or you don't apply your faith you then think that you as the doctor or nurse are the healing person. I believe we should work with God's help and with science's help because science looks right down into the small parts of the body and applies healing but actually God looks at the whole person from above and our spiritual needs are much wider and bigger than our physical needs. But as you can see, this has led to a great emphasis of the body and science and scans and tests uh, and that if only we knew the result of this test, the result of that test, we would give the right recipe of drugs and the person would be better. But of course we all know that just giving a drug is, doesn't make people better and that uh, uh, a vast majority of, of illness will be multifactorial, there will be lots of factors in the causation of the illness and therefore you need multifactorial management plans to cope with this. Um, I see a lot of patients with depression. A third of my job is dealing with depression and mental health problems. Drugs are very rarely very helpful in this but the counselling and talking with people for their psychological need, for their spiritual needs are very important and therefore you, you can't separate the, the, the body, mind and spirit needs of that person. So whole person medicine doesn't just apply to mental health because if you fracture your leg it still has a big impact on your life and how you can run your life and how you feel about your future, how your future roles are going to be and if you have depression it gives you physical symptoms so that they're completely uh, integrated and interrelated so we must uh, learn to understand all the different aspects of the whole person and of course the person that's the expert in that is the patient. So understanding, listening and understanding our patient is how we go forward to do that. Because patients come with some physical symptoms, but they come with a lot of psychological and spiritual symptoms too. So we need to recognize them. The real question I think we were discussing just now is, is whole person medicine new? Is this a new phenomenon? I suspect that it's not. I suspect that there are in centuries ago, many people, particularly general practitioners, family doctors, have had care of the patient's bodies, their concerns, their worries, their ideas, their expectations, their social concerns, um, and have been acutely aware of 
Spiritual issues like hopelessness, like despair, like anger, like bitterness, like unforgiveness. These are all symptoms of spiritual problems and I suspect that doctors have been concerned with these for a long time. But it's not until the arrival of scientific medicine, probably from the time of the uh, Enlightenment and the discovery of the circulation of the blood and the anatomy of the human being and the rise of science, that there's been this division between science and arts and on one side there's been communication skills, um, art, and on the other side medicine and science. And so I think really we've lost something which we already had. And we've taught in countries where uh, we've heard senior doctors saying we weren't always like this, we had something better before. So you could say that whole person medicine is simply rediscovering things which are deep uh, within the the culture of many countries, not all, but in many countries and many cultures it's there, the body and mind and spirit. My own recollection of it being taught systematically was dates from about 1963 when we had multidisciplinary teaching rounds I involving a psychiatrist. So there was certainly uh, mind and body and we were a Christian group of doctors so there was a certain amount of spirit but it tended to be separated just a little bit and not talked about very much because we didn't know how to talk about it. We didn't know how to build it into the model. But now there's increasing evidence of the importance of, shall we say, hopelessness as a prognostic factor for cardiovascular disease, for malignancy. And the evidence is that these things that we might call spiritual issues are important for the prevention and the genesis of physical problems. What I'm saying is that if you neglect spiritual issues, maybe you're negligent. Whilst I've been working in medicine for the last 20, 30 years, it seems to me that we've had a, a big change of the whole field of medicine to go from being quite whole person aspect related, but maybe not naming it, as David was saying, to a completely reductionist view in our hospitals today because of the takeover of medical science and uh, imaging techniques and testing and drugs has become the god of the day and it used to be knowledge is power now it's drug and scan is power but this is a very narrow way of looking at things the trouble is that that's also combined at the moment with a, uh, a rise in design and, and the way that society is um, affected by media, by pictures, by designs, by naming things, branding, I can help you have a good branding, because all these things are saying to people, truth is what you want it to be. If you don't like this truth, we can change the truth, you can have a different picture, a different image, and truth will be different, and therefore we've lost truth in society. We've also lost some medical truth because science is so detailed now that it throws up a lot of results that may actually not mean very much, but people are starting to read things into it and give advice on potentially uh, unmeaningful results. Now, the complication of all this is that patients don't know who to believe and that doctors are in the position where our Christian values are particularly important, um, both to help that person to be an individual and be part of a community to take away this feeling of no one knows the answer, um, to advise them on that, and also to work with integrity. Uh, corruption is rife in many parts of the world, and uh, the, the Christian doctor will not give in to uh, loss of integrity and lying, and, and just holding these values is what the patients particularly need, because they're at sea and they're hopeless within the societies. The um, uh, there is a, a, a reading in Matthew 23, 23, where Jesus is confronted by the law. And uh, the law from the Pharisees comes and they say, by law this, by law that, which is a bit like saying, this test says this, this test says that. And, and Jesus says, no, you've missed the point. Um, the point is that the most important values of the law are mercy, faith and justice. And mercy, faith and justice are the three things that could make the Christian doctor stand out and they should hold their Christian values in these three areas, particularly in medicine. 
mercy because we want to see compassionate care that's love in action and we want to be merciful to people with needs who come to us therefore we need to teach and show love for the patient and secondly faith we have to believe and help the patient to believe that there is hope therefore we're going to help to give hope for the future we're going to explain and talk and spend time with the patient so that they can fully understand their position and they can then have hope for whatever their future is they don't have to live in ignorance and not know what the hope is and feel hopeless because of it and thirdly justice that there's a lot of unfairness and if we stand up for fairness and, and take a heavy stand against unfairness, whether it's corruption, whether it's um, judgmentalism, uh, persecution, stand up for our patients and stand by them. And that will um, be outpouring of those spiritual values, those Christian values in your medicine and every day. Recently you had a conference uh, uh, and, and that was called Whole Person Medicine. Why you just decided to have that topic in your conference and whole conference, in whole conference you had been talking about that project? I'd like to uh, tell you about how Prime is different from other teachings and we, we've just had um, uh, a discussion recently with colleagues in Prime about when we're teaching teachers how to teach, why is it any different to going to do a degree in the theory of education? And we had a really good discussion about this. And uh, there are various aspects of being a good teacher and being an effective teacher that are not taught in these courses. And the sort of aspects are to do with the qualities and values that that teacher has and how it's expressed within the relationships between the teacher and the student. Because also we have to remember that in medicine and nursing, this is role modeling the, the future relationship between the doctor and the patient or the nurse and the patient. Therefore, the whole of medical education is practicing and safe practice and learning and taking responsibility in relationships for how you're going to uh, be an effective doctor. The, the teaching that we do is experiential, therefore we like to uh, involve people who come to um, learn with us and the emphasis is on learning not on us telling something but is on the people coming to be learning and if we are able to demonstrate something show something so that they're right in experiencing what it's like to be the patient what it's like to be the doctor they will come to understand their own views and attitudes and what's in their heart and therefore have an opportunity to do things differently I think one of our not our worries, but our, our conflicts, our battlefields, is people who deny the existence of the spiritual and say there's no such thing. It's body, mind and social. In one sense, I, I, don't, I don't care what you call things, whether you call them physical, whether you call them psychological, whether you call them spiritual, that doesn't matter. What matters is what's the patient's problem and can you deal with it and if you can or you know somebody who can do it so when you have problems like bitterness unforgiveness loss of wonder loss of love loss of trust loss of faith uh, despair hopelessness I don't mind what you call those problems that doesn't matter the question is can you enable your patient to tell you about these problems can you find out what might be the cause and can you enable them to find a solution? Um, you remember when Jesus had to feed a lot of people, or at least a lot of people wanted to be fed, and Jesus didn't say, well, we're going to need 5,000 loaves and 2,000 fishes and that should do it. He said, what have you got? And so uh, one of the principles of managing certainly spiritual and psychological problems is what does the patient have in fact even physical problems what are their defenses what are their resources look to what they have and multiply those 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 resources so it's about enabling patients to work with what they have the doctor of course can't do everything doctors now increasingly fortunately work in teams and so you'll have experts in diagnostic uh, processes, experts in social care, and experts in, we hope, uh, spiritual diagnosis and spiritual care. 
And so we would like to see uh, pastors and priests and experts working as part of the team, part of the healthcare team. And certainly part of Prime's work is with uh, spiritual leaders in communities, both to help them and enable them to improve the physical health of their communities, but more importantly to be, to be part of the team, to enable the doctor to manage spiritual issues. Sometimes there isn't such a person. The doctor can't access one. In that case, it's down to the doctor, isn't it? We've, we've heard a lot about what the doctor could do, what the doctor should do. This is quite scary territory for, for doctors. You're going to have to stand up on your own sometimes to do this. And I just want to give a word of encouragement for you doctors. I've been reading through Lou because it's Lent and it's been very illuminating and one of them was the transfiguration when Jesus met on the top of the mountain Moses and Elijah and he communed with these great spiritual giants for advice, for help, to discuss his future and to discuss how he would have to die in the future. Now we have spiritual giants around us all the time. We have other people that we know can pray for us, can be there for us, and we should look for support in our churches, in our friends, uh, in our forefathers. And then after that, Jesus came down the mountain and following another event, he then talked to his disciples and it seemed that it was just an idea to Jesus. He says, let's get into the boat and let's go to the other side of the lake. And all his disciples, which is like you doctors, said, OK. And they all got into the boat, even though this was an unplanned event, and off they went into the, uh, into the water, to the other side, to the dangerous parts across the waters. And during that time, the storm blew up. But even though this world is difficult, the life of a doctor is difficult going through all these storms, Jesus was there the whole time. And Jesus' comment when they woke him up saying, can't you save us? He said, well, don't you have faith? I was here all the time. And we, we really have a lot of encouragement and help and companionship for Jesus if we look for it. We also have the power of the Holy Spirit to guide us and help us. And it says he'll, he will guide us into truth. And truth is what we're trying to find for our patients. Thank you for being our guests and thank you uh, for explaining us what is whole person medicine and how doctors can be helpful and how we can improve healthcare system by editing this, uh, by adding this whole person medicine in our practice. I think we'd just like to thank you so much for inviting us to be part of your program. David? Thank you very much. Uh, for inviting us to be part of your program. I'm sorry that I can't see your faces. I hope that one day this is going to be possible. If not in this life, well, maybe in the next. Goodbye. Thank you very much.